Newswatch continues to bring you the live coverage of the landing of the space shuttle Atlantis, returning from its four-day top-secret military mission. Showbiz today will be seen immediately following the landing. With uh, Navy Commander Robert Hoot Gibson at the controls, the Atlantis is now dropping like a stone and headed towards Edwards Air Force Base in the Mojave Desert in California. That's where CNN's Greg Lamont is stationed. We see the shuttle. Greg, what can you tell us from there? Well, as you can see from the monitor, there is perfect weather here for a shuttle landing. There are some light clouds, which would only serve as a better backdrop to see the shuttle as we now see it coming down in for a landing. Usually at this time of day at Edwards, the winds kick up. In fact, this will be only the second afternoon shuttle landing. There was concern this morning when there were some brisk winds, but as the winds died down, so did the concern. Atlantis, like Discovery, will be landing on runway 17, the longest runway at Edwards. When you look out across it, it has an optical illusion of appearing as though it's wet, but I'll guarantee you it's bone dry. It's been very unusual covering the landing this afternoon, having been here for Discovery's landing. There were thousands of reporters, hundreds of thousands of spectators, dignitaries, including the vice president. There was a tremendous sense of anticipation and pride when Discovery landed. Not so this go-around. We know very little about the mission of Atlantis. There are no spectators here because of secrecy. And you get the feeling that it is business as usual. But when you talk to the NASA employees here, they say they're just as excited about this landing as they have been in the prior landings. They say that uh, this has been a very secret mission. But uh, Tom and Tier, they assured me this afternoon that the Atlantis would not come down shrouded in the secrecy of some kind of sheet covering it. Yes, Tom and Tier is uh, with me here at CNN's center. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, since we're getting all our pictures from NASA, and this is a top secret mission, and communications have been blacked out and all, are we going to not be seeing something that we normally see on one of these missions? Well, I, I think that we will see a landing as we normally see it at Edwards Air Force Base. I think uh, what their concern was, was uh, sending any downlink television or radio communications uh, in the earlier parts of the mission. I, I doubt if there is much that uh, the Soviets or anyone else is going to be able to tell from this picture mm -hmm. because most of the work has already been completed over the weekend that was really secret. Then what would be the purpose of not inviting the public to watch the landing? Well, I think that, uh, you know, they're very security conscious uh, surrounding this whole mission. And uh, they decided to put a blanket on it from start to finish. And I think the preparations were, if there was a problem with the La Crosse satellite, which we believe was deployed over the weekend, that they would have to unload it at Edwards Air Force Base. And it would be very difficult to do that uh, if you had the public there and uh, had it opened up. Uh, I think it was a precautionary measure. This has been an exercise in silence since liftoff on Friday. Is it basically an exercise since this, I believe, is the third secret military mission aboard right. a shuttle, or is there more to it than that? Well, the excitement that uh, we saw generated uh, indiscreetly by several NASA managers, I think this is probably the most important of the three so far. They were actually putting hardware into space, and uh, the lacrosse system comes uh, out about the same time that they rolled out the uh, B-2 stealth bomber. So I think that uh, the importance of the mission, uh, if indeed they, they did launch the lacrosse satellite uh, over the Soviet Union, was uh, pretty important, I think, to the Air Force. Tell us a little bit about the lacrosse satellite. The lacrosse satellite is uh, basically about a 15-ton piece of hardware, and it's imaging radar, which uh, enables to see through clouds. In other words, they can monitor the Soviet Altitude Union both day and night, feet, range and see through clouds, when, uh, see through leaves Atlantis on trees, uh, make uh, three-dimensional mock-ups uh, from the radar imaging. This is something that uh, until now they haven't been able to do. Here is some animation of what we believe the satellite looks like. It is huge. The uh, solar array is about 150 uh, feet out each side. Uh, it is a very, very large satellite, and uh, it is part of a series that are going to be launched. This is the kind of a mission that really makes the Soviets nervous, isn't it not? Uh, I would think that, uh, and they've expressed their displeasure, that uh, this was going to happen uh, on the week that uh, Gorbachev was coming to the United States. Seconds. Interestingly, uh, as you look at the live picture from Edwards Air Force Base, uh, they're going to uh, manually uh, control it. Uh, Robert Hoot Gibson, the commander, is going to uh, turn over control for a few moments to Guy Gardner, the co-pilot, and uh, actually steer the shuttle by hand. It's uh, one of several uh, experiments in, in steering seconds. that they're going to do. They're, when they land, the nose wheel steering test is going to be conducted where they start on the center line and move to the right. This uh, is in preparation for when they once again maybe return to concrete runways like at the Kennedy Space Center. And they'll also be testing the brakes. Uh, there was some concern earlier before Capcom the launch about the pressure in the, the, the tire. Right. And uh, 
it is within NASA says the acceptable limits uh, uh, say that it may be a little low, but it's not uh, out of the specifications for safety, and it's one of several spare tires. They wouldn't have lifted off. Definitely not. It would have been something that probably would have stopped the launch last Friday. And we're about uh, less than a minute away from touchdown, and uh, as you know, this the gear drops bingo like that it's at the last It's definitely at the minute. last second. Uh, the first time I remember seeing a landing, I was going, you know, where are the wheels? Where <laughs> yeah, the put wheels? the wheels down, quick. The last uh, <laughs> it's quite a sight as it returns uh, over the California desert. It uh, comes uh, at, a, at a very, very strong angle as it comes in. Uh, there were some... Uh, oh, here, here are the wheels. Here we go. Main gear landing. Main landing gear being deployed. Gear is down and locked. Velocity 400 feet per second. Main gear touchdown. Nose gear touchdown. It's a beauty. You know, the astronauts, the five military astronauts that uh, were aboard for this mission uh, probably don't receive the recognition from the public. And uh, it's kind of a shame because uh, they're doing, going through the same dangers that everyone else does uh, when they go up. But uh, they're back home and they'll have something to tell their kids about, maybe if they can tell them. <laughs> You've been talking to some of the NASA people. Has the blackout on this mission dampened the excitement? I think a, li I think a little bit. I think, uh, you know, we're, we didn't see many people uh, outside of Edwards coming to watch the landing this time. And right. It's something that is, uh, as they say, is necessary, but the next one in February, uh, if it uh, goes on schedule, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people at the Cape for that. All right. Tom Ventier, thank you so much. Greg Lamont at Edwards Air Force Base. Atlantis is home safe. News watch is over. I'm Lou Waters in Atlanta. Good night.